What I want to look at here is something called Lenz's Law. It's something at year 12, level 2, that you should know a little bit about. And the way I'm going to describe it is like this. We've got a solenoid. It's not hooked up to anything, but it's got a little meter. Um, so it is connected through a meter, call that galvanometer. You may have seen this done in your junior science. If you push a magnet into, this, into the hole on the top of a solenoid, and you're going this way, then because the field lines go like this, what you're doing is you're pushing field lines into that solenoid. And if we look at it from the top, it's looking at it from this end. That's like you're putting a whole bunch of field lines into it. Now, when you've got a conductor and it's got a magnetic field running through it like this, it doesn't mind if there's a strong magnetic field, but what it minds is if that magnetic field changes. So if this is increasing in strength this way into the, into the coil, then it's going to produce its own magnetic field coming back the other way. And the only way a wire can produce a magnetic field is by making a current flow in it. So this whole solenoid will make a current flow in itself to produce a magnetic field to oppose the change. Now that's what Lenz's law is all about. If there's a changing field on the inside of a conducting loop, then that field causes a ch that changing field causes an induced voltage in the loop, and the direction of it is to oppose the change. So if the x's are getting bigger, then it's going to make want to make its own magnetic field coming from the opposite direction, which means it actually wants to make a, a north on that end. And by using the solenoid rule. We could go, okay, that means the current must flow that way, uh, which means if this was the surface of it, then we're going to have an anti-clockwise flow of current. Um, anti-clockwise means it goes around that way. All right, so if we, actually, let's put that one on there and that one. So that's going to go, actually, sorry, that one's going to be like that. And we want to produce a north. That didn't come out, did it? So <laughs> another way to look at it is we're looking from the end. The field's going in that way. We want the field to come out. So again, we want an anti-clockwise flow. And it's better without all those x's in. And it just so happens that that makes a north. So what it's actually doing is if we run our finger around the outside of the wire, we're producing a field coming through the hole upwards. And since we're looking on from the end, that's to oppose the field from the magnet going in. So it produces its own field coming out. And so you can use your right hand grip rule for the wire on the end to figure out which way the current flows around the loop to make a magnetic field come out to oppose the big magnetic field going in. Or you can just use the solenoid rule and go, oh, it wants to produce a north, therefore um, the current's going to flow in an anti-clockwise direction looking from the end. Um, so you need to know your right hand grip rule for um, the magnetic field direction uh, around a wire. Or you can use your right hand grip rule for a solenoid but the principle is you're trying to produce an opposing magnetic field to oppose the change so the funny thing is when that north gets pulled out the north is now pulled out north in then that field is decreasing and it's going to want to produce its own magnetic field in and to do that to make the field go in you've got to actually have a clockwise current in here this clockwise current, if we use our right hand rule, produces a field in. And it's doing that because the field that's in is decreasing and it just always opposes the change. So what it, when you made the current go in this direction, you got a current you got a field that came out to oppose the one going in. When these X's start to decrease, now what it wants to do is produce X's to take the place, if you like, of the field that's decreasing. And the way it's going to do that is by 
having the current flow in this direction. And you can use your right hand grip rule on the wire again. And from a solenoid point of view, that would mean that our hand would be going over the top of the solenoid and we'd have a north at the other end and a south at this end. So Lenz's law is always working to oppose whatever change is taking place. Um, my, my physics teacher showed me the north when I was learning about this and I think he also showed me that um, the south will give you the direction of current flow there. There's another way you can look at uh, Lenz's law and this is also something you may have seen in level 2 which is where you've again got a field and what you have is a conducting loop coming along and going into the field so then it gets in the field and then it gets out the field now we know from the work we did with induced voltage V equals B L V that when this gets to this side sort of like that that you're going to get a voltage in this loop like that so that gives you a voltage the problem is when the whole thing's in the loop and moving you get that voltage on both sides of the wire and it cancels out and when it comes out you get a voltage just on this side so again you get a voltage that's using the Lorentz force law which we already know how to do so if you graph this here um, on a bit of paper like this when it goes in you've got a positive voltage then you've got nothing while it's in the field then when it comes out you've got a negative voltage you may have seen this in your class now you can also explain that with Lenz's law and so we'll do the whole thing again but this time we we'll use Lenz's law so we've again got this field and we've got this square conducting loop coming in and we know from the Lorentz force law that we're going to get a negative voltage here a positive voltage here and nothing here now the thing is this loop here has no flux no magnetic field in it so it doesn't care no voltage produced but when it starts to enter the field here only part of it has magnetic field in it and as it gets further in the magnetic field is increasing I told you it doesn't like an increasing magnetic field so Lenz's law tells us it's going to have a field to oppose that and to oppose it it needs the magnetic flux to come out and to do that it needs a current flowing in this direction use your right hand grip rule and you'll see that a current flowing in that direction doesn't produce as X's going in it produces dots coming out to oppose this change once it's in there Lenz's law tells us no flux is changing no need it's constant state of flux don't need to produce a voltage we know that it actually there, if we were to look at it from the point of view of this conductor move from a Lorentz force law that there is voltages being produced but they're just cancelling out and when it starts to leave the X's are now decreasing so again what it wants to do is to produce this time a current that's going to flow in this direction and why is that because a current that flows in that direction produces X's going in so Lenz's law tells us exactly the same thing about a conducting loop moving in and out of a magnetic field um, as the Lorentz force law. It's all about Lenz's law. The current that flows in the conducting loop will be a current that opposes the change in the magnetic field. All right.